you would not believe the weather outside this morning take a look at this good morning yeah <laughs> so we managed to get most of the uh, luggage onto bumblebee this morning before the rain started so everything is kind of on and ready to go but i don't think i'm ready to go yet i can hear lightning in the background and it's raining pretty heavily <sighs> So I think we're going to have to wait a little bit before we leave. Looks great, hey! <laughs> <laughs> We've had a little weather window, so we're just trying to set everything up as quickly as possible and hit the road. Yes, 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 yes! Looking a little bit better. I think it's definitely time for us to make a move. Quick, quick, quick! quick. Whee! Mm hmm good old cleaning cloth one year on the road still going strong good morning world welcome to our circumnavigation around the globe by motorcycle we're here in the small village of wontong ri in south korea and today is going to be a mountain day and i'm really looking forward to it because today we are going to be exploring the Siorak San National Park but we're also going to be having tofu in a tofu town I'm so excited for that yeah it's going to be a really really cool day exploring South Korea so let me show you guys the route for today so we are here and today we are going to be heading through the Siorak San National Park over to the coast at Yangyang then we'll be following the coast down through Gangneung to finish the day in Donghae. Yes, first we'll be heading into these babies in front. Fingers crossed we won't be rained on like crazy because last night was an insane crazy thunderstorm, like one of the strongest thunderstorms I have ever witnessed. <laughs> Gasolina? Yeah, gasoline. Gasoline, yes. Okay. Yeah, so down. Uh, uh, so down. In Gang Gangyong? Gangnam? Gangnam. So to Gangnam, so yeah. down, so down. Yeah, so down. Mm -hmm. uh, for uh, for eating tofu. Mm -hmm. Tofu, tofu, tofu. Uh, uh, like this. Ah, dubu, dubu, dubu. Dubu. Ah, look, tofu is good. Yeah. Ah. 1,659 per litre, which, yeah, it's basically a pound as well, isn't it? Yep. Pound per litre, ain't bad. Ain't bad. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yep. Cool. After a successful fuel up, we said goodbye to Wontong Ri village and to our helmet microphones that decided they had had enough for today. Maybe it's a good idea to change them tonight. And we headed up into the mountains of the Siorak San National Park. This 63 square mile reserve was designated as a UNESCO Biosphere Reserve in 1982 and it was the first Korean national park to be named under the national park law in 1970. As well as many stunning mountain peaks, the park is valued for its floral diversity and is home to many rare plants and animals. There are over 1,000 species of known plants in the reserve and 1,562 animal species have also been classified there so far but there were also plenty of beautiful twisties for us to enjoy along the way.
Halfway through, we reach the reserve's highest pass, Hang Yeo Yong, 920 meters above sea level, and the views from the top were truly incredible. These roads were a biker's paradise, and we saw many other riders here to enjoy the sights. But now it was time to head down the other side, all the way back down to sea level, towards the village of Cho Dang on the east coast. Time for some more twisties. Cho Dang Du Bu village is a tofu lover's dream. Du Bu is the Korean word for tofu, and this area in the heart of the city of Gangyung has nearly 20 tofu themed restaurants, each with their own specialities. The legend of Cho Dang Du Bu dates back to the reign of the Joseon dynasty in the 1500s. A prominent political figure, Hyo Yop, settled in the area and was the first to make tofu with the local seaweed infused water rather than salt. This made it lighter than the commercial tofu, and it's claimed that nowhere else in the world makes tofu in the same method. And as tofu lovers ourselves, we were excited to give it a try. Hi. Whoa, is that tofu? So the waiter was telling us that this is actually where they make the tofu. And you can see it, there's some like giant blocks over there in the water. Looks like a dreamland for us here. So cool that they actually make it here on the premises every morning. Yeah, we came to the right place. This is tofu paradise. Wow, look at this. We're here having lunch, having tofu. <laughs> this building looks really traditional. Very cute. So we ordered something it calls a hot pot. And the picture looks like this. This one. But as you can see, normally it's coming with seafood here, some shells and stuff. So we asked for that without seafood. And he spoke actually English and he said no problem. So I'm excited. Let's see. <laughs> I'm excited. This looks awesome. Look at the size of this piece of tofu. Oh my god. Amazing. And we're having like all these little dishes here as well. <gasps> I'm in heaven. It's so good. It so looks good. so good. Oh my god. I'm totally stuffed. <laughs> That's a lot of tofu. Just having a little lie down, hey? <laughs> I guess that's the good thing about eating on the floor. <laughs> Thank you so much.
much, thank you. My friend went to check, uh, take a photo with you. Yes. Okay, with the motorbike. Okay. The yes, motorbike. yes, 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 of course. <laughs> Beautiful, what a lunch, hey, what a lunch. Yeah, every day, please like that. Oh my God, that place was so nice. Breakfast, lunch and dinner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that was a lot of tofu. A lot of goodness there, that was amazing. Yeah, it was so tasty. We've booked a room in the town Donghe, where the ferry is gonna be going in two days. And that is 42 kilometers down the coast. A lot of people are out and about. Yeah. Anyway, I just wanted to take a little loop to see the coast and we'll probably make our way back inland. Can't really get anywhere here. No. <laughs> what is going on there? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Crazy is that? <laughs> is that people riding bicycles along a zip wire? <laughs> wow! I never saw anything like it. That's so funny. <laughs> Seriously, that's really, really funny. I definitely would not be into that. <laughs> <laughs> I would totally be into that. I think that's really cool. A little bit of the Korean seaside. So now I think we're going to be heading back over this bridge and further down the coast towards Donghae. Yes, let's do it. Whilst you guys are taking in some beautiful coastal views, I thought I would take a minute to tell you about this video's sponsor, On Vacation Doctor, and their super handy app for people traveling the world like us. The On Vacation Doctor app connects you to top English-speaking doctors in any country in the entire world. Just put in your location and this app provides you with the name, location and phone number of the closest English-speaking doctor to you. It also provides local ambulance, fire and police numbers, as well as the local US Embassy address and phone number. But the awesome thing about this app is that it's absolutely free to use for the first six months, and then only $4.99 for the next six months. So super helpful and super affordable. Show your support for our very first sponsor by downloading the app for free today by clicking the link in the description below. Well, it wouldn't be a true overland adventure without a little bit of rain now, would it? But eventually we reached the city of Donghe, where our ferry to Russia awaited in two days time. Could be this one, yeah. I'll check on Agoda. We downloaded a new hotel app, which we've never used before, called Agoda. Okay, the Donghe Royal Motel. Oh, got to get out of the way. Beautiful. Good evening, guys. We made it. Happy and alive. Woo! <laughs> Here's our room. Pile of crap over there. <laughs> yes, and this room is actually the, the cheapest room we found so far in South Korea. It costs us 18 pounds a night. Considering yesterday the night cost us as well 37 pounds. Yeah, just so, for one night. Yeah. So this is pretty good. This is where we'll be for the next two nights. Uh, tomorrow we got basically a day off, but we are going to head over to the port just to talk to them about the export process for Bumblebee. But mostly we can just have a rest and prepare ourselves mentally for for the 27 hour ferry ride <laughs> over to Vladivostok 
and then the crazy leg coming up through Siberia. Yeah, wow, we have a really, really tight time schedule because we have four weeks to enter and exit Russia. Because nearly a year ago, we got our visas to go to Russia, but they only last for a year and ours are nearly about to expire. And we haven't even gone into Russia yet. Yes. <laughs> and we've got to go on this part of Russia up to Mongolia. But then after Mongolia, there's another small part of Russia before we get to Kazakhstan. So we have to complete both Russian sections in around four weeks from the time we arrive in Vladivostok. So that's a lot of miles with not too many days to do it. So it's gonna be pretty intense. I'm excited for it and I hope you are excited for it as well. And that's it from us today. We hope you enjoyed the video. If so, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, share the video with your friends and family, comment below. And if you really, really, really like our videos, you can join us on Patreon. The link is in the description below. We will see you next time.